Hey folks, so I've been bringing up Flirtal in some of my recent videos, and for those who don't know what Flirtal is, it is also known as topolutamide, and is available in the Czech Republic as a topical anti-androgen, which is marketed for the treatment of male pattern baldness. So, even though it is commercially available in the Czech Republic, it can also be purchased online through various sources like eBay, and sometimes Amazon.com, but these are not terribly reliable sources, as there are periods of time when it isn't available, so that combined with the fact that it is not a very cheap treatment, makes it fairly unreliable to adhere to for consistent use. So even though I like Floridol and think it works, I usually rely on Alfredidiol as my main topical anti-androgen of choice, even though it's not as strong as Floridol. And it's also a very effective solvent for my research subject when I apply ru 5 it for one to it. Although I will also occasionally use Tamoxidine as my main solvent, although Tamoxidine is a growth stimulant and not an anti-androgen. So since bringing up Flirtle, I have had numerous people tell me they can't acquire Flirtle uh, based on where they live, so they've asked me about drugs which are related to Flirtle, such as flutamide and bicalutamide. Now, between these drugs, the only one I have used is flutamine, Flutamide, I should say, but the two are mostly the same and prescribed for the same purposes. The only big difference is mostly availability with b being more commonly available in Asia, whereas flutamide is more common in Western country. Now, you'll notice the names for all these drugs are very similar to uh, topolutamide, uh, which is what Floridol is. So one may assume that if Floridol is good, then surely flutamide and b must be good too, right? Well, structurally, all three drugs are very similar and they're all potent anti-androgens. So in the in the case of Floridol, also known as topolutamide, it is only available topically and it only works where applied locally on the scalp. It doesn't have any systemic side effects because it is hydrophobic. So what that means is that by the time the drug enters our bloodstream, it is no longer active because our body is 60% water. So this makes uh, Floridol seem very promising as a topical anti-androgen, and even though there isn't a tremendous amount of research comparable to say you know, like clinical trials underdone uh, by an FDA-approved drug like finasteride or vernoxidil, there is still some solid evidence, including a study of about uh, 40 people, which shows that the antigen, also known as the growth phase of the hair follicle, was accelerated by 76 to 85% of patients uh, compared to placebo over a course of six months. So even though my recommendation and the recommendation of most doctors, for that matter, will always be to start with finasteride, since it is a very effective drug that is well tolerated, I feel based on the evidence as well as my own experiences having used it as both a standalone and adjunct treatment for hair loss that it is a good choice for the very few people who can't use finasteride due to systemic side effects or have been using finasteride for a very long time and no longer find the drug effective. So of course like I said earlier uh, the problem with Fluoridol is not so much uh, so effectiveness but rather adherence. It's hard to adhere to a treatment that is seldom available for people living outside of the Czech Republic so that is why I believe people have been in investigating using these related drugs I mentioned, flutamide and bicalutamide, as topical anti-androgens for hair loss, whether it be like a fluoridol or finasteride replacement. So sadly, and you know, I really hate to disappoint people since I know there are a lot of people who don't have access to fluoridol, uh, but using flutamide and bicalutamide for hair loss is not a viable option for anyone. And I'm going to explain why, of course. So Flutamide and bicalutamide, like I said, are two very powerful anti-androgens that are used orally to treat a number of androgen-dependent conditions, the most notable which is prostate cancer. Now, prostate cancer is a, is a disease which feeds off all androgens, so the only way to fight it in patients dying from it, other than like chemotherapy, of course, is to suppress all androgens as low as possible. And if you're dying from prostate cancer, then you may need, uh, decide the side effects that come with suppressing testosterone, of which there are too many to list, are worth it. But in the case of hair loss, I doubt many of us would deem our hair so important that it's worth chemically castrating ourselves of becoming like Jason Blaha. So even in the case of men who may be okay with that, you know, such as men who want to become women and transition, drugs like flutamide and bicalutamide would still likely not be good options because they're very hepatotoxic which means they're bad for your liver, so they raise liver enzymes substantially more than, say, something like oral spironolactone, which is another uh, oral anti androgen um, And sometimes uh, oral spironolactone is uh, prescribed as, a, as an oral anti androgen for transgender people for that very purpose, to suppress androgens. So 
Uh, in fact, there is a case study, which I'm going to link below, uh, regarding the hepat uh, hepatotoxicity of bicalalutamide and flutamide, which showed that um, the patient actually uh, died of uh, liver failure. So, you know, it's common for all medications to raise liver enzymes to a degree, but rarely is it such a risk that a patient will have to worry about death unless, of course, they're already doing a whole bunch of other things to hurt their liver, like uh, drinking excessively, taking like 20 Tylenol a day, you know, those kind of things. So, of course, I am talking about two oral drugs, but what about the topical variations of them? I mean, those are the things that people are investigating and wondering whether or not they will work for hair loss uh, while also avoiding some of the horrible sides that come from the oral versions of the treatment. Well, I don't know if topical flutamide is still on the market, and I have never even seen topical bicalutamide, although it may exist, but I can tell you uh, that topical flutamide at least used to be commercially available online, and I have used it. I used it, I think, for about three months sometime in the early 2010s, and even though I didn't use it for very long, I feel it did actually work as an effective uh, topical anti-androgen. Uh, but unfortunately, I got some pretty rough side effects on it. They are mostly sexual side effects, so I had to drop it since it seems the drug does indeed go systemic. It's not hydrophobic like Fluoridol because of course it isn't. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to be used orally. But sadly, due to the fact that it can't be used topically either since it goes systemic and enters the bloodstream, I, it's not a really good option uh, for as a topical treatment either. So even when I use very small quantities of it, I still got sides, uh, probably because it's just that powerful of a topical anti-androgen. So just based on my own personal experiences, I cannot recommend people try these drugs, although I can understand why there seems to be this renewal in the hair loss community in topical anti-androgens. So I'll talk a little bit more in depth about viable options uh, for people, not just flirtal, but other things I've used that work in addition to things that don't work. But in the meantime, I highly recommend people do not take flutamide or bicalutamide for hair loss. I mean, if you choose to fight hair loss, uh, you're going to be in it for the long haul. So you might as well just stick with the clinically proven and reliable and easy to adhere to treatments like finasteride. I mean, I don't even start with topical anti-androgens. I mean, after all, what could be more simple than just taking a pill and forgetting about it? I mean, I've done it for over 10 years. I've had no side effects and it hasn't lost any of its effectiveness and all the time I know people and all the time I've used it. And I know people have been using it since uh, 1992 when it was first approved for male pattern baldness and it's still working for them even to this day. I mean, you should of course, you know, talk to your doctor first before starting treatment. And if you're really so worried about the sides, then just talk to your doctor about, you know, starting a lower dose and, you know, using it less frequently even. Uh, you know, you can take like 0 0.5 milligrams every other day or even just 0 0.25 uh, milligrams is a common recommendation for a lot of doctors and is even considered the standard dose in some countries like Korea. So, you know, these topical anti-androgens are good choices for some people, you know, like hair loss veterans such as myself who have already been on finasteride for a long, very long time and just want to add new stuff to their routine. And it's also a good choice for, you know, the very few people who really cannot use Finn as opposed to the people who just imagine they cannot use it. But for newcomers, I strongly recommend you just start with, uh, you just stick with finasteride. So, you know, other than that, uh, nothing else more to say about that. So this is going to be a pretty short video. So, all right, guys, I'll be back with more content soon. Take care.